Hey guys, what you about to see is the Catherine Constantinidis' recent visit to the Sahrawi refugee camps. The Sahrawi people are from a country called Western Sahara, which has been illegally occupied by Morocco for the past 41 years. The Sahrawi people currently live in refugee camps inside Algeria. Morocco has illegally occupied uh, the Western Sahara because it is, it is rich in natural resources and so they are depleting the country of that. Meanwhile, the Sahrawi people live in refugee camps with less than nothing. I may be the only one who thinks so, but I feel it is more than wrong. It's a travesty of justice. Anyways, please watch the following and share this video fun word. Let's raise the awareness about the plight of the Sahrawi people. This is the reality of where I am and how the Sahrawi people have been living for 41 years in a refugee camp. It's absolutely horrifying that people live under such horrific conditions. So their water is kept in these lilos that stay here outside. And this water in the lilo is filled probably every six weeks when the water is brought in by truck because there's no access to clean drinking water or any water at all that is and these are the dwellings and homes that they stay in it's winter still so it's actually um, at night it's, it's pretty cold it's quite fresh today it's probably about 30 degrees Being Saturday, it is in fact their Sunday, and so the camps are quite quiet. People are at home and just being with their families. You also see it, you don't see actually that much rubbish, but you can see there's a plastic bag that's blowing in the wind. Unfortunately, because of the lifestyle of living in a camp, they're forced to, to adhere to a lot of Western kinds of ways and lifestyle habits only because of the aid that they so so desperately rely on and that means a lot of packaging and something that they're not used to something that they really have been um, trying to avoid but because of their desperation to make sure that they at least have food their food is dropped by air and it comes in once a month from the world food program they also actually have um, they, they have uh, I'm just trying to go to the other side of the dwelling where I'm staying so this is where I'm staying um, it is freezing cold at night absolutely freezing there's a little child running the children are so cute it's unbelievable that they, they find such great joy and happiness just where they are they know nothing outside of the camps absolutely nothing um Darren, you're asking about the water situation. So the water situation is, in fact, uh, it's really sad. So I'm going to show you the lilos again. 
those lilos are filled with water. They sit in the sun every single day. There is no access to clean, safe drinking water. In fact, there's no access to any water whatsoever. But the water is dropped by air. Uh, sorry, it comes in by truck. The water comes in by truck, and that's every six weeks. So they get their ration of water, and as a family, they decide how they're going to use it. And um, you'll see there's a pipe here on the floor. So that's attached to that lilo, and the water then from there goes straight into into the dwelling where um, they're able to to put it into a bucket. So all the water is used in a bucket, and they're able to then use that for washing, uh, for for drinking. It is not safe for people who don't live in the camps on a on a constant basis to actually drink that water, but they do uh, try to. Uh, put make a fire and heat some of the water as well but the situation is really bad food comes in by air they only get seven ingredients once a month and those seven ingredients have to do uh, for the family the food has also been cut because of you know money not being available from the world food program so they get less food now than they ever have and living in these refugee camps 41 years later is just something that I cannot comprehend and something that we we really cannot cannot accept and these people have been forgotten nobody talks about them who even knows that there are such a thing as Sahrawi refugee camps in Algeria because Morocco illegally occupies the Western Sahara their home and their land and land that is rightfully theirs but they have not been able to live there for more than 41 years they fled during a war in 1975 and the UN Security Council and the African Union have not been able to resolve this or come up with any alternative referendum or anything else of that nature. Alright, well, that's as far as I can show you for now because I'm going to lose my connection to Wi-Fi but just a, a quick thank you for watching and thank you for for listening to me if you have a look there's a blue lilo in the distance it's not that far but that's a, a lilo filled with water for that family and there's a little boy playing on on the left hand side of that um, you can also see that there are quite a few tents the tents look something like that one that you can see and there are many of them around so the last family I stayed with live in a tent such as that and I will be visiting them in the next few days and I'll certainly uh, hopefully be able to to show you what that looks like from the inside it's unbelievable that some people have access to you know um, a Wi-Fi signal yet they don't have toilets they don't have proper dwellings they've got no access to clean drinking water they're not able to grow food as you can see how bare the land is here and they 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 only are able to live with the hope that rests inside of these people the Sahara people are just unbelievable when it comes to feeling how hopeful they still are that they will one day return home and they will be able to one day uh, go back to the Western Sahara, a place that they rightfully belong and a place that Morocco has illegally occupied for, for more than four decades. So it's really phenomenal to be able to, to be among such people filled with hope, yet they live in the most desperate situation. So this is home for the next 10 days and this is... Unfortunately, the reality of the Sahrawi people that are here and that are um, living under conditions that we cannot even imagine. Um, as you can see, the ground is, is bare and just mind-blowing. Nothing grows. I am going to be working with the World Food Program organization here in the course of the week, specifically on a pilot project um, that has, has received funding for a hydroponic system to try to grow food within this camp. This camp has about, probably about 80, 80 to 100,000 people. However, there are five of these in the vicinity. So the refugee camps here, there are five of them that make up, um, that make up the Sahrawi camps here in the, the southwest of Algeria. And... They are approximately just under half a million people across these camps, probably a bit less, about 350,000. But the scary thing is that um, these people are actually living in these conditions and people have forgotten them. So it is my, my responsibility, here comes little Mohammed, who 
does not leave me alone. It's amazing. He's so special. But uh, Mohammed, hi Mohammed. <laughs> He's so cute. Hello. He, he okay. He wants me to turn the camera. Just give us a second. Say hello. Say hi. <laughs> hi guys. So Mohammed, and here's Mohammed's little cousin. Mohammed's little cousin. Yes. And now his mom's calling him and staying cross because he's very naughty. <laughs> but, but thanks for watching, guys. We'll we will be safe. And um, I just want to say hi to all of you. And uh, we have to remember our humanity before anything else. We we must not be separated by things that divide us. Things that we have set in place as society. We need to make sure. <laughs> We need to make sure that we fight for our common fight humanity. Yes. 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 Okay, guys. Thank you. From Mohammed and I. Say bye. 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 <laughs> bye. There we go. Mohammed and Zibrahim. You naughty. Let's show the people. Yes. Zip. Unfortunately, again, the the waste. You. Hi, Susie. Yes. You. Yeah, the waste is a is a problem, especially with, when there's you. wind. But, but uh, in fact, they actually able to to and really uh, look after their waste in an amazing way. So they have many programs, and they're looking at a biofuel system and, to try to ensure. So Wait. Wait. <laughs> to try to ensure that waste does not become a problem in the community. But yep, it's really, really hot. And it's in fact winter, which is a, a big problem. So I've never been here in winter, but when it becomes, um, when it, it, it starts to become spring and summer, uh, the conditions are horrific. You cannot sleep. It's, it's, very difficult to make movement around the camps because the conditions go up to about 42 degrees in the day and at night about 35 so you can imagine that these are not easy acceptable conditions especially if you're not used to them and you come from a society such as South Africa anywhere in South Africa and uh, we continue to stand in solidarity with the Sahrawi people and we continue to make sure that we are able to share their story and give them platforms to be able to tell their own story so that these little children never have to grow up and set up the next generation of people within these camps. These little children have to be our priority. Thanks for watching guys and thank you for your amazing support. No, no, no. <laughs>